Welcome to Slayer Fest 98. I'm Tarek. I'm Colin. I'm Ian Carlos Crawford. <laughs> I'm Meredith Goldstein. And today we are talking about The Magicians Season 1, Episode 11, Remedial Battle Magic. Yay. Uh, Meredith, you just told me that you watched some of them back to back and we were, before recording, discussing that this these episodes particularly do bleed a little bit into each other, right? It is a little like... I think all of season one does that a little bit, but I've been trying to, you know, re-binge. And in doing that, when I do a few in a row, I will leave with one storyline that continues. And I'm like, wait, which episode was... Yeah. <laughs> which? Yeah. But so much is in this episode. You know, and I know, Meredith, I feel like we talked about this a million times. And Colin, I feel like you and I have too. Like, the show does always have a lot. Like, each episode has so much that happens. And this episode is particularly full of like things um you know we get them practicing their magic we get the you know alice and quentin uh, having whatever going on we get a, a fucking real housewife we get you know gods and demons and like it's but it's i don't know meredith you are <laughs> i'm i want you to say it smarter than i'm saying because like <laughs> it still works though, right like it does but it is it like a lot it is a lot, and it's it's. I, I will do no spoilers as this is a spoiler free watch. But remembering certain pivotal moments in character development that are happening right in a row in a way yes. that I do not. Where I'm like, oh, this is already happening, and and um, the way they just charge through plot and um, get you to the next moment. I, I I've been shocked by things I thought happened much later that are yes. already happening. Yes, I. There has been so many things that I was like, wow, that's in season one. Holy shit. Which is like, I don't know. Have either of you, Tarek or Colin, have y'all noticed any of that? Like some stuff that it's like, wow, they go back to this like in two seasons. Um, no, I was lot. I was having the opposite reaction. I was terrified because I thought this was the episode that something horrific happened. And so like every single time I saw <laughs> a specific character in a specific place and with those characters i was like oh god is this shit and <laughs> i got worried about that i know what episodes. you're talking about <laughs> i was like is that what was happening fuck um yeah no. i know i'm I've so been... sorry like like i'm not trying to like bring up spoilers no. but, like i was just terrified <laughs> like, i've been i've episode. been dreading getting to that moment yes um Fair. colin what were you gonna say <laughs> uh no i've i've noticed it a lot for sure um to, not in this episode per se, but the same thing I had to catch up because I haven't watched anything since the last episode I recorded. So the last two days have been a real binge. Um, oh, God, yeah. But I didn't realize they uh, touched on the child abuse so quickly from a certain writer. Yeah, I thought that I was, was much later in the series. I did not remember that being a reveal that like we know halfway through season one. Like I did not remember that but there's just so much that happens i feel like it is hard to keep track of what happens when, happens. when. Yeah. because i also um an election that we all love that uh, happens of someone getting a position i forget that that's not till the end of fucking season three like in my mind that's like season two <laughs> but it's the second to last episode of season three oh, yeah. so we're here to talk remedial battle magic um i am curious and i feel like i want to ask summer so margo is a main character like summer's got top billing of like of all the cats like she's got with the main cast members and katie jade taylor has like special guests but katie's in more episodes because like margo's been oh. gone and like it's weird that like she's she's popping up these last two episodes but she was gone for either two or three um, i think she was the last two she was gone yeah yeah um and it's just that's weird for like someone who has main cast billing and for like reoccurring character. But I think Jade Taylor does get boosted up to main cast like next season. I think so. And I'm trying to think now in the books, if Katie is around the entire She's, thing, like maybe, maybe they thought she, like, isn't we're going to have this character for, isn't Oh, she maybe made up? I think she's made up for the, Oh, she might be. Oh, well, then maybe that's why. Maybe they were like, we don't know if we're going to have this character. That's fair. Yeah. Long term, um, like we know we're going to have the, you know, core physical kids for X number of seasons. <clears throat> so we get Margot reminding us to where we left off last episode, which was <laughs> Alice and Quentin fucking to get Penny back. 
Um, I love that that's a sentence that like isn't really shocking to any of us having watched the show. It's like, <laughs> yeah, of course, that's, you know, books fucked in what, episode three, episode two? Like, sure. Um, and I like Margot like ribbing them about it. She's like, what does she say? Like, go back to the part where you like teleport in on them banging. And Alice is very defensive about them doing a She's spell. She's like, we were doing magic. We were casting a spell. <laughs> I I get it because Quinn and Alice are supposed to be like awkward and nerdy and bookish. But God, they're so uptight and like prudish. And like, they're this, all so hot. I, I don't know. And the way like they all dress like very fashion forward and very like seem like they would be progressive 20 year olds not like prudish 20 year old i don't know i did turn a corner on her i know the last time i was on i think we were just talking about general frustrations and there were some moments in this episode where i was like okay here's where i started to click here's where things started to click so i was excited that in subtle ways there was there were i don't want to jump too far ahead but there are some moments in this episode where i was like okay i can i can be on i can be with her i can be invested in her yeah i this is the first time watching i've done a few like background rewatches never like a i'm sitting down i think i've done one like sitting down to watch it rewatch um but i've done a couple where i just like let it play while i'm doing shit and i will say i think this is maybe the first time i've been sold on alice this early on in the show i think this is a very good episode for her Mm -hmm. yeah it is and like i always found their like they're like oh, we like each other, but we're awkward, like a little off-putting. But now I'm like, I don't know. I feel like because I've seen where they go, I know where every character ends up. It's like, okay, this is like the start of these characters. I'm into it. I don't know. I love how so- socially awkward they both are because they just remind me of myself in this. Si- like if I was in, in their situations for like either one of them, I'd be like, no, I get it. Yep. I, I would be exactly the same way. <laughs> like, like it feels like to me, like Penny and Katie and, and Elliot and Mario, they're all like the cool kids, you know? And like, yeah. I'm like, I'm definitely like the, the, the Q. <laughs> I'm not the Alice because I'm not that smart, but I'm definitely like, the, uh, you know? Listen, I, I feel like I've said this on every recording, but anytime when I see someone talking about the show and they're like, uh, oh, Quentin's such a like whiny baby. I'm like, I am Quentin. So relax. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hearing you say that, like, aren't we all a little bit, I'm watching the show like I'm a Margo and yet I'm totally like afraid to speak <laughs> like a Quentin. And yet I'm like, why are they so scared? And I'm doing this from the, my couch, but probably a lot of people who love the show are Quentin's in ways that we might not admit mm. all the time. Yeah. Uh, my best friend, Kim, who's also doing these episodes, uh, once wrote me a Christmas card. It was like one of the years that I had a terrible year um, and like put something really sweet. And then it was like, I know we wish we were Margo and Elliot, but we're actually probably Julia and Quentin, but we're still fucking cool. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> so I think about that. And I mean, we have the, the matching magicians tattoo. So we get them talking. Elliot is, is he supposed to be like drunk and high and or yes. high? He is very much self-medicating. Okay. Which, like, Um, it's been a few episodes, and I feel like not one of his friends has been like, hey, buddy, what's up? (laughs) Like, they know what happened, but no one's... Margo, there was a moment in the previous episode that Margo says something like, do we need to have a talk? We should have a talk. And he's like, blows her off. He says no. Yeah. But then he starts to have a talk with the Margolem. Right. And then when he realizes it's not really Margo, he shuts down again. Which I don't know why he did that. Like, because the thing is, I also understand the like, I'm too in my feelings. But like, I don't know. I feel like Margo's a good person to, for him. I mean, she she loves him unconditionally so much. Mm -hmm. And it's so obvious that she does, right? Like, I don't think there's a question there, um, especially this episode. And I just, I'm like, just do it again. Just like talk to her now that it's her. Um, But again, the thing that this show does well that I really appreciate is, and Meredith, I think we've talked about, it does do grief and trauma like pretty well. The Katie's mom of it all, I'm glad we go back to it this episode. That was one of the things that we breezed by really fast that like her mom exploded into blood. But I'm glad that we like, Elliot has to kill his, you know, fake boyfriend who was possessed. And we let Elliot be traumatized by that because that would be fucking traumatic, right? Like, and I appreciate that we're not blowing past it, even though at this point I've already forgotten that character. All I remember is him (laughs) sucking on the knob, which I'm glad I remember that. Um, (laughs) 
But I don't know. What do you all think? Like, what I found really interesting was like after they got their emotions back, like just like the this idea that Margot is so concerned that like that Elliot doesn't like her. Like it, it didn't mesh well with me because I'm like, y'all are best friends. They're like, I don't foresee a circumstance in which Margot would ever doubt that Elliot actually likes them, likes her. You know, like that, like it felt weird to me. Meredith? Well, I was just, so I had this moment rewatching this where I was like, wow, they get to issues like grief, you know, obviously making Buffy comparisons. They, they get there so much faster and they get to these complicated conversations between characters who might not always interact one-on-one they're suddenly getting there and they're doing that within the first season and I was like wow how did they do this and then I was like oh well there's also the benefit of like on Buffy those characters are what 15 right yeah when they start so so they're they they have all this room to to say oh well these 14 to 16 year olds in the beginning don't have that wouldn't even have um especially in 1990, whatever, like they're not going to talk about this yet. And these are characters that are going to jump to the conversation faster and they're going to be more self-aware and they should because they're grownups, but they're also not like grownups, grownups. They're not, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how old they're supposed to be. We've debated this, right? They're supposed to be what? Like, I I think about early 20s. Yeah, or like, yeah. at like 46, sometimes I'm like, is somebody mad at me? And I shouldn't think that. So definitely at that age, I feel like I would be like, <laughs> I like, and the, and the self-centeredness of like, oh, seeing somebody else's grief as an indictment of you is actually quite self-absorbed. It's like not about you. It's they're going through something. And um, so I, I thought a lot about age today, rewatching it and why did she think that and did it track for me? And I thought, well, this is a really complicated age because everybody seems like fully formed and yet you're not. They're they're at school. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I think so hilariously that you said that because I was gonna interject um when you were saying, like, oh, that's kind of selfish of Margot. I was gonna say, yeah, but at 41, I'm that literally my note next to that is me drunk, like asking any friend that's next <laughs> to me, like, do we not friends anymore? <laughs> I even took a picture of that and texted it to Zach to be like, this is me drunk <laughs> of my note. Um, so yes, that, that, it does still happen. And like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just like that we're doing this. And I, like you said, we're doing it pretty quickly on. Like we're not shying away from like, you know, and Buffy's to bring to compare to Buffy and in Buffy season one, we get Jesse dead and he's their best friend. And we never mentioned again. Him again, like ever. <laughs> Um, which the show does get better at that moving forward, but in that first season. And, you know, I always, I think about this with Scream, right? Because I love Scream. And people, people were complaining, and I, I have my issues with the sixth one. People were complaining. Have you all seen it? Mm-hmm. I know you're not. You're not big on, you've seen Scream movies, right, Meredith? But I know you're not big on them. I've, I've, I've seen the early ones, and like I think I probably would be big on all of them if I did a rewatch of them. And I, I don't want to say the new ones until I revisit the old ones. I think I probably at this age would be perfect for them, but at the time, in real time, I wasn't massively into it. Well, one day I'll get you to watch all of them. Um, <laughs> so in Scream, like people had issues with six that one someone's partner. To, I, it's a movie that's been out for a while. Um, Mindy Meets's girlfriend is like one of the characters that gets killed fairly early on. And people were like, well, she should have been sad. She should have been crying. And it's like, right, but that's not fun. That's not a movie. Like right. if a character just sits and mm-hmm. cries the rest of the movie, like what are we doing watching this movie? Right? Like it's a horror movie. It's not a movie that's about sadness. It's a horror movie. That's a slasher. Like we, we do have to kill people. Right. But I think they find the good balance here of like, Elliot is sad. He is depressed. But, like, he's still kind of like, yeah, I'll do whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for, like, whatever whimsical magic thing we have to do. Sure. But he's just, like, depressed and self-medicating while joining in, right? So I think that's a, I don't know. I For me, that's a good balance of, like, this is still enjoyable to watch. Also, it makes sense that he's still, like, acting the way he's acting. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We talked about Meredith and I talked a lot about grief. <laughs> we, I was just going to say, we, we love to talk about grief and just the idea of like, especially in the thick of, in like those early, whatever, you're just like, okay, I guess I'll go to the cheesecake factory. Like, I don't know. Like, what am I, like, he's very <laughs> along for the ride in a way that I find. And also knowing rewatching this, this 
season and remembering his origin story of magic of of doing this thing he didn't want to do to somebody he didn't even like i think this probably calls back to yeah trauma that i mean that now it's uh, uh, watching it again i'm remembering these layers and of course he would feel this way right mm -hmm. yeah so margo and elliot uh bring up the idea of giving the beast the button okay and i will say i did enjoy this episode this episode lost me like five different times i kept forgetting i was like wait what does that thing do what does this thing do oh there's an, another enchanted knife oh okay like a button just can bring anyone to fillery right that's what the button does uh it brings them to the netherlands i think is the Okay, I don't know if but it like, directly isn't that why the beast wants it? Because then he can get. It's like theoretically yes. he could get. It's to... it's a portal to his domain <laughs> that he doesn't want others to have. Okay, um, they uh, they strike a vote. Um, I like that Alice votes with that because I don't think that's a terrible idea. I mean, we see that it is, but in theory, in theory <laughs> I think I would vote for that idea too. But I am curious, how would we all vote in this episode, Meredith? Would you vote for the? Striking a deal or no? I oh, this is. A t I mean, I would vote for whatever is most cowardly. I know this, so uh, this is like all of this. Um, you know, there's that scene later. I think where Katie is like, you want to battle this creature on its own turf, and I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, but I'm curious. What about what about you two, Tarek? What would you vote? Uh, I would say no, no, absolutely no. not. Like not the first time I go to like the first time I go to Fillory, I don't want to have to deal with the beast. Like maybe if I knew the lay of the land and I'd known Fillory a little bit more, but I would not be like, let's give him the button. <laughs> Fair. Colin? Uh, I would like to say I'd vote no, but I feel like if I saw everyone else being like, yeah, that's a good idea. I'd be like, yeah, that's, these people are smarter than me. If Alice is saying this is a smart idea, I'd be like, well, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true, especially Alice, because I'd be like, well, this is the smartest person here. Yeah, and like, she said this is a good idea, so I'm going to go with her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if I voted before Alice, I'd say no. And then if I voted after Alice, I'd say yes. There <laughs> <Here> we go. <laughs> Meredith, I feel like you could sway me either way just by speaking confidently and be like, all right, whatever Meredith said. That's I, right. I don't, but meanwhile, I'd be like, what is involving me hiding? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you go give him the button. <laughs> I'm the one, my eyeballs get ripped out. Um, so we then see them arguing and we get another, which we have seen a couple of these where we see all the fucking characters die brutally. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't remember this. I remembered some others, but I did not remember this. And when no. it like caught me off guard that Margot was like sobbing over his Elliot's body, I was like, "Ooh, I don't like this." Like, oof. Mm -hmm. um, the beast comes in, kills Quentin and Alice. Everybody's dead, and then they're all gasping, and we see that they were doing a what was it called? A probability spell. Probability thing? spell. Yeah. yeah. Um. I do think that must be fun, though, right? It must be fun to film. Be like, oh, I get another death scene. All right, cool. Like, oh, I get to do that again. Cool. Like, that'll be fun. <laughs> um, just like I feel like it's probably fun to die in a horror movie. We wake, we go back to there. The coin, blah blah blah. They don't have. It's like what, they can't do it again. Is that what it was? Yeah, they don't have enough. It like ran out of magic or something. I I did not under. I was like, I don't know what this coin even is. Like, yeah, they didn't describe it well enough at all. No. See, and that's the thing that the show does well, and sometimes I wish they did a little more of, like, we don't need a full long description. I just need, like, a a little bit more of a definitive, like, this is what this does, we can do it this many times. I need them to, like, mm -hmm. say that out loud. Mm -hmm. um, which is wild, because sometimes the show does have big exposition dumps, but then sometimes we just breeze by things, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> one, one thing that I, that I really, really enjoyed from this scene was... That at the end when Margo is having difficulty just kind of like coming back into reality Elliot was like you are fabulous you are under the influence of a probability spell and like my husband pointed this out to me like this is exactly what people on drugs say to someone who's having a bad trip like yeah. you are you are okay you are under the influence you did this to yourself it was like exactly the same type of verbiage I'm like oh yeah no that tracks <laughs> that yeah. tracks 100% I do feel like they very much do magic as drugs 
this season at least i think maybe moving i don't know i can't remember if they keep with it or we kind of peter out but i know this season i feel like they do heavily do that um which i'll say it they do it better than buffy i don't well they love it in season six they definitely do it a lot and it's even brought up in i think it might be the last episode when um Richard, his name, that says to Julia, like, you think magic is this way because the people you deal with are drug dealers. But I do think they, when they kind of veer away from it, it's a lot nicer and cleaner than when Buffy did it, which was just like, it's drugs, it's drugs, it's drugs. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Oh, now you're saving the world. Great. Yeah. Like, do they the make it very like, the world. Yeah. it's drugs if you're doing it like this, because that's, of course, how drugs are. <laughs> but <laughs> if you're using it to save the world, then we're good. Um, right. <laughs> so, yeah, and I do like, and Tara, to your point, I do like when she says, I am fabulous, aren't I? Like, that's what she <laughs> responds. And that's her coming out of it. Um, Quentin says, I hate to say I told you so, but you know what? I don't, you know what? I don't hate telling you I told you so. Q says they need to do, they, this is again, like we breeze by this and I was like, what? When he's like, we did this many, we were murdered every time, but the one time there was mysterious death, that's the thing we should go with? I didn't understand that. No, he said they, he said there was like mysterious white, like... like I, yeah, I, Elliot says like, it just went white. They didn't yes. die. They just yeah, don't know what they happened. Don't, they don't know what the answer was. It was like hidden from them for some reason. But every other one, they like explicitly died, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're um, like, well, the one option that says we don't die like i mean i'm with q you know like yeah go go that way i i do feel like then i'm like yes let's go with what quentin is saying because i watched myself and my friends die you know 85 other times so (laughs) yeah let's go with the weird light because that seems less painful at least um i do like alice being like or alice agrees with him and then margo says it's because he's blowing you (laughs) because you're yeah he's blowing you he's blowing um yeah i love that um Penny leaves. Here's the voice, beast voice again. And now we will cover Julia because we cut to Julia next. Richard is t- so. Then here we're getting a lot of info dumps. Mm-hmm. Like I did not mm-hmm. follow it while taking notes. I know they're talking about magical creatures. She says, "You mean like vampires and unicorns?" And he says, "Unicorns are a myth." Oh boy! Then we quickly lose me. <laughs> <laughs> Can one of you be tell me? I don't know. Can one of you tell me what the like? I don't know how we, cause so Julia and Katie go to visit insert random demon. I don't really know how we like get. I feel there. like he was a vampire based on the blood. Well, no, no, no. Yes. That guy yeah. I think was a vampire, but, but then they go see the demon. Yeah. But I think that. the, the idea is that all of the magical creatures, the, the more powerful they become, the closer to like the favorite children of gods that they were. Mm they might have a lead on how we can actually petition a god. So the group has been trying to find all the low-level scum, but thinks that Julia, because she's god-touched, will be able to find someone higher up enough the chain to actually get them a good lead on what okay. they need. We, he does say god-touched in this? He yes. does. Yeah. I missed that. I must have been. I, so I was like, he's telling her she has power, but what are we getting it to? Is. But okay. Yeah. When he is reveals this, that the prayer he gave her was a test. Is this before? So like, so I watched the episode. Basically, I just watched the episodes that I came on to record for. So like, I didn't miss. I didn't watch the middle ones. Don't this say is anything after spoilery she in levitated, case. right? Yes. 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 Okay. Just okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Um, that was, so that it, was her passing that test. Right? That was like, the okay, test. That, yeah, that yeah. is what showed them that she was God touched. Essentially. Correct. Because okay. that that prayer spell doesn't work for everyone. Only people who are God touched and okay. get a reaction. This is, but this is the first time we're hearing that, right? Like, yeah, because this is the first time. Well, I guess maybe in the, at the end of the last episode is when they reveal that they're trying to get oh, in touch man. with a god. Yeah. All right. So then they they do send Julia whatever. Um, then we go to the Fizzle Kids Cottage. Q says they need to do some battle magic because of the beast and the Netherland fucks. <laughs> I love Margot saying, isn't that illegal? I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> like that's very her. Um, 
Then Alice gets a note. She has to call her mom. We learn that her, we learn that the, her parents' boyfriend Joe, who also <laughs> was a traveler like Penny, um, died by suicide. And Alice gets worried and knows that like the beast might be targeting travelers. Targeting travelers. Right? This was the moment where I was like, "Thank God," because <laughs> she gets off that call and is like, "I got to find Penny right now." And it was. <laughs> After watching a few episodes in a row and and having a difficult time, I always have a tough time with season one, and yeah, it's been, been better this time. So if anybody who hasn't seen the whole series, like just give it time. But I was yeah, like, I agree. This is yeah, <laughs> her, her her immediate concern for a person in her group, which like she hasn't even been given the chance to show that a lot. She yeah. you know the, she spends the first few episodes so focused on certain goals and then being awkward and then dealing with Q and all the stuff. Like just that, I don't know. I was just thrilled at that moment i was like yes like worry about your friend <laughs> yeah and like even your friend who's kind of a dickhead right like i yeah. i i like that and i you're you're right that might be why i was sold on alice this episode because we actually saw her more interacting with at least penny outside of she doesn't even look them. at q she just like walks she's like i gotta go and mm. he sort of is like by the phone and is like all right i guess there's a thing we have to do but i it felt like a turn for me yeah no that's true also, I have a question for the class. Uh, do we explain why they're still... Because I had to look up when this took place. It's 2015. There maybe would be some payphones, but why don't they have cell phones? Is that like... Is that a like reason I missed that was like said, mm. oh, we can't have technology? Or... Wait, is it, is it... I have made up a thing and maybe it's not real. Is it... I thought it was like a magical payphone that... Because no, we did not have payphones then. Like I thought it was a gimmick... A sort of thing of like this is how they talk to the real world maybe, maybe. break bills has no service yeah that, makes, that would make sense oh yeah that would make sense actually <laughs> yeah like we and haven't have we seen that... them call their people outside of break bills on a cell phone at any point no because quentin also talked to his dad on that payphone huh yeah, I All thought right. it was intentionally a throwback of like, isn't this a weird thing that there's a payphone? Which is kind of like the like vibe of break bills, right? Where it, like it it's set in modern day, but it looks like it could be like. I was trying to think. Katie's mom has a phone, though. Isn't that yeah, what she not shows? At break bills. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying. Edge, like, so that makes sense. Outside the world, like technology yeah. is a thing. It's just something must be going on at break bills. Well, that's yeah. That's what that's what I was like curious about. But I guess. All the explanations we just said make sense, and they don't. I guess, like, once you say that, it's like, okay, yeah, fucking that, sure. Like, well, at the same time, they must have like Wi Fi or something there because Quentin right? emailed like, Julia. Yeah, and like, I don't know, you got magic, well, so like, maybe it's like contained in the world. Like, you can have Wi Fi, you can communicate within break bills, but not yeah. to like Chicago yeah. or whatever. I don't know. That's yeah, true. Who knows? All right, that's that's a good enough explanation for me. Um, <laughs> Alice goes to find Penny. We hear that like awful high pitched noise that he's still hearing. And I was really glad. So this episode also helped. I've been slowly being sold again on Penny because I do love Penny where he goes. But man, he, I, he is such a dickhead this season. Like mm. it's a little much for me at points because I and I know we always have these characters, especially in genre. There's got to be one who's like. I don't need your help. Wah. Like, get away from me, even though the person, like, needs help. Um, and I just hate the, like, I'm going to be mean to you, so that way you don't help me, even though I do need help. Um, that just always annoys me. But I did like that, like you said, Meredith, we see Alice, like, and him. We kind of start to see, like, okay, these two maybe are friends, not just, like, we got to save the world and defeat the beast. They're, like, could be cool with each other. So then Alice tells him the beast is targeting travelers he says he has it under control he goes to visit his mentor and Tarek. what happens oh gosh well <laughs> why do i have to say it <laughs> <laughs> poor guy he's like he's like taking off his rings and he's like has a note like his like suicide note all prepared and penny walks in and the guy's like i have a brilliant plan like he's not gonna mess with me anymore i'm not gonna do anything that he wants and he's like yeah. shoots himself in the head. It's, it's just like so brutal. horrible for Penny mm -hmm. to have to see. And yeah. like to just like there's like one thing for Penny to realize and to hear that like these people are like hurting themselves or that he's they're after travelers. And it's another to like see the guy that trained him 
succumb to yeah. this. Like this is the guy who's supposed to be stronger and wiser, like yep. trying to figure out what's going on and he can't pull through. Like, right. I, I feel this... like it's traumatizing and like more than just like the person is that it's like, like it's like brings up all the like, well, if this adult mentor figure couldn't fucking make it, how am I going to make it? Right. And like... it says a lot about Penny's strength like his inner strength and like yeah. his his capabilities to like pull through like just like the fact like that he's able to last long enough to figure out a solution that no one else had i really like that about penny and like we really get to see like oh yeah he's a dick but he is super strong and he knows what he's doing and like you can rely on him kind of in a way right does that make any sense no yeah no okay. i think you're right and, and again that's why I'm more sold on Penny towards the back half of this season because we do see things like that. And we do see that like, even though when he's an asshole, he still does care. Like right when Elliot's possessed boyfriend went to stab Quinn, he jumps in without saying anything. and just jumps in to fight the guy because he knows he's tougher than Quentin. And he is more likely to be able to beat up this guy than Quentin would be um, and gets fucking stabbed in the like process. And you uh, you think that like of all of them, you think that Penny might be the most willing to bottle up his emotions because of all of the fear and anxiety and stress that he's currently yeah. having because the the like the evil guy I forgot his name what is his name the um, beast the beast. beast the beast is in his head. You would think yeah. that he would want to let go of his emotions so that he can like and the fact that he doesn't and he's like the only one with Alice being like no like we got this like yeah. says a lot about Penny's yeah. character. I agree. So Penny, <laughs> yeah. So then we go back to um, the gang and they're practicing their magic. And this is where, so like, I didn't understand that the spell didn't work. Like, I was like, I don't know. What are they doing? Like, then they just, Quentin mentioned something about like it being like D&D. I do like, <laughs> so I have to, I have to preface. I would never say this is okay in another situation, but I do love Margot being like, what if we got a gun? Because <laughs> at, at this point, I would be like, whatever could fucking work, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> and and I just like, like, no, Fillory is like pre-industrial. <laughs> yeah, I I'd be like, that. my dude, that is not a like explanation for not bringing a weapon. <laughs> no, but I do love then Elliot's like, okay, well then how are you with a sword? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like... How are you with a What are our options here? <laughs> <laughs> um, Q says he knows who they need to talk to, and it's Katie. They have Penny points out, and I'm like, I kind of fully agree with him when he's like, it's so fucked up. We're doing this mirror spell again when mm -hmm. we know what happened last time. Like, I feel like we're avoiding the beast, so let's not do something that we know the beast can like come through into our dimension and kill people, right? Like correct but for this time it works um they see q recognizes that it's um julia's apartment they go there to see katie and she says you can't do this is where this is another spot where she's like you should only do it if you're 100 clean you can't do it this way well maybe you can and i'm like oh come on like either you can or you can't we're dancing around this a lot um, and there's a little bit of circling the drain that we're doing, which all shows kind of hit at this point. Well, not all shows, but a lot of shows do because Katie and Julia's whole side plot is a red herring. And it's like, why did we do that? It achieved nothing. It did nothing. Um, and this is another one of those things where it's like, okay, but she just said, you can't, then she said, you have to be clean. And then she said, well, um, I don't understand what she meant by being clean because at first I thought like, you, does it mean you have to be sober? Yeah. And like, that's or like, that's, so that's like, I was very confused because she like, because right now it's like, oh, you have to be clean. Like you just have to have no emotions. You have to be basically mm -hmm. like a monk to be able to perform this magic, which is ironic given that monks don't use battle. Magic. So it's like, <laughs> I, you know what? I could see it being that. Now I'm like, do I know? I don't know. Meredith, what do you think? Yeah, I, I was, first of all, when we get into the specifics of the what you can and can't do and what they're trying to do, like if you ask me to even explain what they're trying to do, I was so distracted in this episode 
by the apartment for the first time. And I don't know if this is something you've spoken about, but I had just been looking for furniture and found my way onto a West Elm website where I realized I can't afford anything on it. But they show these like, you know, rooms and there's the grayness of that. I was so distracted by the literal 50 shades of gray. It's it's like, it's like, and the filter that they put over all of her storyline and the, and I, I was like muted within the muted space. So when the rules and the, like what becomes so dynamic once they leave there, I was like, I don't know what's going on, but you know what? I'm going to just let my brain (laughs) sail right over it. (laughs) But you bring up like a really good point. They like, they put a filter over Julia's like arcs. Yeah. Like right? I, I, I hadn't even like like thought about that, but like yeah, her, like her, like they visually make all of her stories just look pale. There's a there's a a store for like I want to say it's a store for moms, and I don't mean it's an insult. What's that store? Is it like <laughs> J Jill or like Eileen Fisher? And you go in there oh, and like everything Jack is and like, Jill, it, or yeah. like like for wit, and it's like off white sort yeah, of yeah. pantsuits that are very flowy. And there's something about everything in Julia's life that is like. <laughs> like topers i don't even it's like very um it's like casual but also like very pristine and but also and like i would like spill things on everything accidentally because Mm -hmm. it's but but i was very conscious of it this episode where where i was like it doesn't do the storyline favors because you're like now we're in now we go back to a world without color um in, a, in a, and I'm sure that's really intentional yeah. uh, mm-hmm. or, or the alternative. Um, and I would probably, I, you know, I'm embarrassed to say, and I think I said this the last time I was on that I only started noticing this stuff after the, t- the t- heyday of twilight, because <laughs> I was like, everything's just so pretty. And my friend was like, yeah, but there's like a literal blue filter <laughs> over all of it. <laughs> they actually, I think they do that filter on all of the like real world settings. It's supposed to like because mm. in the first episode everything is like very gray when Quentin gray, and Julia yeah. are walking on the street. Oh, um, you're right, yeah. And yeah, maybe just and in like, it to design her apartment that way, it's like extra pronounced because it's like every off white like piece of furniture from West Elm. Yeah, it also doesn't <laughs> like do anyone any justice because I like have trouble keeping track of the characters and everyone just looks gray. So it's like, oh, I don't know what color their hair is. I like need a like color to define like that guy wears a red shirt. This woman has blonde hair. Like that's how I can remember people. Um, And yeah, I just, it, and it, as you said, Meredith, it does her storyline no justice because yeah, it just yeah. makes it feel more drab and boring. Yeah, like, I want to go back to the fun house, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. I want to go to the room with the giant ta-da sign, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, they're there to talk about the spell, and, oh, Margot has a really good line. When Katie says spells only work if you cast 100% clean, Margot says, great, so we're stuck with our dicks in our hands. Um, (laughs) A very good line. Um... Then she's like, oh, there might be a way, but we don't really hear what that way is. We get there. Um, And then Katie and Quentin have this moment here. And I am curious what everyone felt about it. I thought it was a nice moment. These two characters, I don't remember them really interacting much, like, on their own. When it's like Mm -hmm. her and Penny and Quentin and Alice, yeah, but I, like, can't remember them talking that much, just the two of them. So I did like... I forget what he says. He says something like, well, if you're mad at someone, you still care about them. I I, I really like the way that he was, because even though it was said in such a weird way, like I, I, I which is very cute, honestly, um, yeah. I got it. Like, I get it. Like, like if someone messes up and you don't want to be around them anymore, that doesn't necessarily mean that you stop caring about them, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I thought that was a really good moment for them to be able to share that. Well, and like, I've even had, I don't know if the, like you know i can be mad at a friend doesn't mean i like hate them or never want to talk to them again right it's like right. oh a friend's just like pissing me off or annoying me so i'm like all right i'm good right now but it's like yeah i will they will still be my friend i still care about this person you'll get over it and you'll yeah colin what'd you think uh i really like this scene because like it is nice to see that like he said he still cares about julia obviously julia still cares about him they'll you know eventually maybe link up and see and he does point out like obviously you're questioning me asking about her because you want to ask about penny 
because yeah. you still care about Penny. And it kind of fits nicely, actually, with what's going on with Elliot and Margo when he's like, we're fine, we'll get through this later on. Yeah. But it's very much, we're having a, a moment. It'll yeah. be okay. Yeah. Meredith? No, I think b- both of you say it so well. Like, this was, like, this nice, what do they call it? Like, a triptych of of pairs. And even in, I think, what the last episode, I think, right, where Julia and Q, like, send each other notes that are basically, like, kind of hate you but love you kind of notes. And yeah. they seem quite evolved in their friendship to know that something has been broken. But, of course, they still care about each other. And... Elliot and Margo are facing this like soulmate conundrum where if anything is off, it feels like it could be the end of the world. And so they have to figure out what it means to be out of sync, even for this temporary time. And then you look at Katie and you're like, oh, this is a person who in her life doesn't even know that you can wrong someone and, and you can be forgiven. Yeah. Like she seems so at the at the bottom of understand and like just where mm-hmm. they are emotionally. Like I thought he has to look at her and say, you're asking me a question that's really about something else. And, and it's okay that you're asking. And I, I liked it because he's very generous with her. Um, he is. Yes. Yeah. I actually was waiting for him to be an asshole. I was like wondering if there was going to be a moment where he like says something shitty to her, but I was glad that the like quote unquote only shitty thing he says is like, I know you give a shit about him. Just ask. Cause I know you want to ask about Penny. And I, I like that. And also that is not, it's not unlike Quentin, but we haven't seen him do something like that. Um, and I like seeing him do something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like that. We then see um, we then see Penny, like, he needs to ask for help, but he is not. Um, he's doing coke. He's blasting music. Um, he passes out. He wakes up in the infirmary. The woman who is there, there are too many white women with like <laughs> strawberry blonde hair and I'm like this isn't Jane Chatwin she's dead oh this is I the, thought it was the Jane doctor. Chatwin for a second I was like oh this is the doctor that in the previous episode was annoyed she had to tend to um Margo and Elliot and then I looked it up and it was not that woman no it it's was the teacher a different teacher <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that I think it was no it couldn't have been last episode because it was the episode where um Elliot kills his boyfriend when he when they're in uh, the dean's office and the doctor is removing the gloves and stuff. This teacher is behind her. <laughs> okay, and Wait, I was like, "Oh Aunt shit, Duda? those are two people." Yes, yes. This is Andrew. Okay, which I have. Yeah. I'm president of the Andrew Duda fan club for okay. the only reason. Oh, no, she's I fantastic, said. but Big, yeah. I mean, I, listen. I, I always say, like, I think I said on another episode, but in Boston, we Massachusetts, we have well. Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and Anne Dudek. <laughs> I like to add that. <laughs> All right, Meredith, thank you. Because when I looked up, looked her up on like the Magician's Wiki, I was like, oh, why does the name Anne Dudek sound? I can hear someone saying that name to me. It's me. me. It's, it's me. You. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> like repeatedly over and over, and and um, just always, always a delight. So for me, I knew exactly who she was because I was like, oh, Anne Dudek. <laughs> Um, and she gives, I, I do like, she gives Penny the kick in the ass he absolutely needed. Mm-hmm. And he seems to actually listen to her. Right? And remember, she's the teacher that he like kind of flirts with. And she's like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that I remembered. But yeah. I still and like I, in my brain, that was also the infirmary doctor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, I do love that bit though, because previously he had flirted with her. I was like, oh, you know, I can teach you things. Yada, yada, yada. And in this episode, she's like, I've done things that would make you like, yeah. really question yourself i mm-hmm. kind of love when he's like you smoke crack and she's like yeah i've done a lot of things like <laughs> um, did anybody also, when oh i just wanted to ask when it when before he sort of passes out did anybody else think of earshot like it wasn't fully voices oh, yeah, in his head that. but yeah. the way he's like doing like a a buffy like i can't there's too much in my head like there was a <laughs> moment where i was like oh this reminds this reminds me of something <laughs> Yeah, no, I can see that. I can totally see that. You see, I need to. I just, de- I just got Buffy, um, which I'm planning on watching for the first time all the way through. So I, but you have I, watched like parts of it, right? I've watched parts of it, and I remember watching the series finale because I remember the thing that happens. Like, right. so, uh, but it that was like you know, 
yeah. when it aired. So it took, it was a long time ago. Um, so I unfortunately did not re- um, recognize that bit. But I wanted to, I wanted to ask everyone: um, Do y'all think the 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 windows to the infirmary are tinted on the other side? Because I would hate to be there, ill and sick, <laughs> and just have everyone <laughs> walking past. Seeing me. I wow! Even thought about that. I've but... never considered it. <laughs> Yeah, that would be terrible, right? Like, so I would hate it. You're like in a gown too. It's like right yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to go to the bathroom. Can you close the curtain so no one sees my ass? I like, like sincerely, <laughs> sincerely hope like people can't see into the infirmary. I, God, I Ian, I want you to get a guest on production designer. We need to ask about Julia's room <laughs> and we need to ask about the windows. <laughs> God. I, did, I did read a fun fact about the sets is that the first season they filmed at Tulane in New Orleans and after the first season is when they went to uh, Vancouver and the, everything else they recreated like those were actual all the sets they're in in the first season are actual spots in Tulane um, oh. and then they recreated those sets in Vancouver hmm. wild that That's recreating cool. the buildings was cheaper than still filming in the buildings yeah that's wild right like because i even read that the dean's office is like uh, in a, that's like a house that's a room in a house somewhere and they recreated that room season you know one. a little geeky fact because i'm thinking about why it would be cheaper but you know i work for the boston globe and they did spotlight like the movie right and so like they came in and they filmed and for like months we had mark ruffalo there every day and it was like a very weird time uh but then but then they were like they rebuilt the newsroom in canada partly because we were in it so like they needed to use it but also because of i think the tax there was probably tax credits up there there's tax credits and stuff for yeah but then i saw the movie i'm like up here it was very surreal i was like oh my god that's like our office but it's clean can we just move there like (laughs) (laughs) That's crazy. They filmed in both places. Like they filmed in your actual they, office and then in the recreated. They set. filmed a ton in the office, but like they had to do a lot of the weekends, right? Because people, again, people are working. And I mean, the right. one thing they said was that they didn't have to do much set design because we had not cleaned and it was like <laughs> rotary phones, you know. But <laughs> but then I realized when I watched the movie, like everything in a newsroom scene, in a main newsroom scene, they just were like, we're, that's, that's going to Canada. Yeah. Um, so between tax credit, I assume, and just the presence of other people who are not extras. They're like, you all, are too, you all are too ugly and, and, and <laughs> poorly dressed to be in this film in the background. So we're going <laughs> to walk away from that. <laughs> I like these said, you said like the old phones. When I worked at Adweek, they also still had old phones. And like there was working at Adweek was so wild because there was like the digital side and then there was the in-print side and the in-print side felt like a parody of like a seventies newsroom. There was this older woman who would sit on her phone gossiping all day and she was like diagonal from me. And I'd just be like, this woman, everyone can hear everything this lady's saying. And I would love it. I'd be like, can you speak louder? Like, <laughs> It's like a full, yeah, we, we were legacy media <laughs> with all of that technology. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, then, oh, she basically tells Penny that he, if, if like, if someone is reaching out to help, he should take the help. He like mm-hmm. needs to learn. Like she didn't learn that lesson till later. And we don't like see him be like, okay, we just kind of like leave it on that. And then he goes to the physical kids cottage, uh-huh. which I do like. Um, where did they get the bottling their emotions from? Literally. Like he just says that. And then that's what they're doing. I was like, wait a minute. What? This is the technique that Hedrick that? has used. That yeah. Katie that's, yeah. Has. This yeah, is okay. the surprise okay, that Katie said. says there's a method. Oh, right, right, right. Fucking duh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My brain. Um, I like that, Quentin. There are, so, I have tracked almost Only every episode. Trek. There's a Star Trek reference. Yeah. <laughs> he makes a Star Trek There are reference. several in this one. Yeah. Um, saying they'll be like Spock. We'll go, we'll get to go full Spock with battle magic. Alice doesn't like it. Penny enters. And I do like it. She says, you look. And he says, damn handsome for someone who just had a heart attack. Um, because he's right. I yes. yeah. Lev Grossman <laughs> literally yeah. said in our first like episode zero that with Lev Grossman, he said the only reason he didn't want them to cast Arjun Gupta as Penny is because he was so attractive. 
<laughs> he was like, I just always imagine Penny not being hot and Arjun is so gorgeous. And I was like, that is very fair. That's totally fair. Well, when you read the books, he's definitely not a hot character that you would picture. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of just like more of a like consistent dick, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He's a very big dick, yeah. Yeah, like you don't like there isn't like oh we're friends now moment right. I don't believe so. I feel like he's like there, but he's still like mean to everybody. Um, but yeah, I think about that every, I, when Lev Grossman said that. I was like, I've never heard that as a reason for not wanting to cast someone. But like, I would be very flattered if someone was like, the only reason I'm against you're you is because you're person. so hot. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my god, thank you. <laughs> That's like the best reason to not get cast, in right? <laughs> <laughs> like i would be bummed but i would like that as the reason why <laughs> if a lit- and then anytime i'd see like the character that they do cast i'd be like you're not as hot as me right I'd be like, <laughs> mm, you got it because you're ugly <laughs> <laughs> like i would love if a lit agent had said to me ian we aren't accepting you as a client because you're too hot i'd be like well all right that's understandable <laughs> that makes sense yeah, <laughs> <laughs> then we cut to Julia and Katie. They go on their uh, journey. They meet a vampire. Um, I do like that we don't explicitly say he's a vampire, but like they're talking about blood. I just assume based on all the blood. I, mm-hmm. I liked it until she said she brought him her blood and it was the cleanest thing there. I was like, oh, okay, he's a vampire. And we do get vampires again, don't we? Yes. I think. I don't remember. I don't know. No I, I think we do, but I also might be thinking of a Buffy <laughs> reference that they make. One thing I wanted to say, I was going to mention this earlier, um, but like the way that they talk about magical creatures in this episode is like the gateway of how this show manages to like deal with magical characters. And I love that. Like, I love like, like you see these characters and they're just like, they're fuck ups, you know, like yeah. they all these yeah. magical creatures that are just partying and doing drugs like they really modernized all of like fantasy for this show. And this is like mm-hmm. the first chance that you really get to see that, which I really like. You're right. I hadn't thought about that, but you're absolutely right. It really is like this is what it will be with the magical creatures, right? They're kind of just existing too. The, their shit sucks too. Like they're also depressed. Like and I do. <laughs> I do like that modernization. And that is why, again, like. Buffy and the Magicians are two of my favorite, two, my two favorite shows, right? I will, I do not like fantasy, but I love these shows. And it's because they do that kind of shit where it's like mm-hmm. more urban fantasy, but also like they're modernizing the like demons and monsters, which I really yeah. appreciate. Um, and I think I it, it sounds crazy for me to say, but I would say the Magicians does it even better because they do it pretty consistently of like everything's kind of a gray area i mean the real world is you know filtered through gray like (laughs) everything is a gray area and that's what i do like about like this vampire she's just giving him blood there isn't like a well we have to kill him it's just like yeah i'm gonna bargain with the vampire brought him some of my blood sure right like Mm. and what does it say about like this universe's vampires where like this guy doesn't go out and hunt humans like he's like so desperate for this blood he's like oh i want it he's not like 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 you'd think that you'd approach a vampire and they'd be like yeah. having a bunch of their human like snacks around <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> um he kind of tell like I, he says he has a contact for her they're doing some scooby-doo shit down a hallway with flashlights julia picks up something it's a dusty like saint candle and i didn't quite understand i know that's supposed to relate to like then she's holding a statue later that's like a statue of this maybe of this is it fucking virgin mary i couldn't quite tell i don't know i'm bad with that stuff it seemed like it was uh our lady uh underground i'm I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be our lady underground because her image keeps popping up through that this episode Uh Oh, okay. So it was just like, (laughs) it wasn't like she got the idea from the candle. It was just like the image is popping up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If if you, if you, uh, if you close up a little, um, too much, you can see that it like, they like just took a candle and like cut out a face of someone and put it on there. (laughs) (laughs) What's funny is later on in this show, and I think it's like season three or four, there is a shot of prayer candles 
and there is uh, James Marsters and Sarah Michelle Gellar's face on the candles. Like it's like a display of saint candles. And one of the rows is Sarah Michelle Gellar and one of the rows is James Marsters. And then there's a bunch of others, but like they are prominently featured in the candle display. And it makes me very happy. Amazing. (laughs) Pop culture saint candles are my favorite sacrilegious product. Just hands down. (laughs) Me too, because I even have props. (laughs) This is uh, my Abby from Broad City saint candle. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. It says every once in a while, I like a finger. (laughs) That's so And I have an Alana one, but I can't reach it. Um, But yes, I also really like them, Tark. Um, So they meet up with Katie's mom, but it is not Katie's mom. I do like that the demon is like, I'm trying to give you a gift here. I'm having her forgive you. And they're like, we know who you are. Like, (laughs) yeah, we're not having that. (laughs) And again, I like that this demon is kind of like, fuck i don't know what you gotta do what are you coming to see me for gods are dead i don't know like and we it's also like a nondescript demon they give it a name later but uh it doesn't matter i don't know what did we think of this scene i thought it was interesting that it was naked but it like was projecting clothes just to be decent. Yeah. like i like I, <laughs> well, I guess it's less of a gift to see your dead naked mother <laughs> <laughs> yeah that definitely wouldn't be a gift <laughs> like as, as three three-fourths of us are in the dead parent club i would not want to that would not no. be the image i want to see <laughs> so, you, know. <laughs> you know um but yes uh the meredith what do you think because i do like the way the demons portrayed as because i didn't remember this at all i was like oh is it gonna like attack them and they have to kill it but no the demons just like I don't fucking know. And that's it. Yeah, right? I liked it. And I like that it it starts out like, the, is this going to be this like meaningful moment of something? And and you're right. It, get, it lets us revisit this thing that happened really suddenly. And um, and no, I, I liked it. I mean, I, the, the whole, this whole side plot is super confusing to me about this quest and then the lack of resolution of it. But yeah. of all of the moments, this was my favorite in that. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like it probably was a, budget problem but it works the fact that it's like you just see a sliver of the demon in the mirror with the tail um Mm -hmm. and i think the show does a really good job with that because i feel like they work well within their budget where shit still looks cool even though it's a fucking sci-fi original show that couldn't possibly have that big of a budget but they Mm -hmm. do a good job of working with what they have um so i like that (laughs) um then we uh they leave and we're back at Julia's. They're discussing it some more. Um, I Julia says, we're not, I'm not going anywhere. This is my hell. And everyone starts laughing. And I was like, I don't know what we're laughing at. This does. I know. I was like, what? It, it's like, get out. She <laughs> said this, he says, I don't know what you're going to do, whatever. Um, like, you can go on, but we have to, like, continue our quest. And she says, well, I'm not going anywhere because this is my home. That's what oh, I she thought knows. she said. That's oh, what she, I thought she, she says hell. home. She doesn't say hell. Oh, no, I no. thought she said, I rewound it because I was like, why did she say hell and everyone laughs? And no, I but like, I, w- I thought she said home and I was still confused by the reaction. <laughs> like, I don't, I didn't understand what was happening. It wasn't yeah. that good of a joke, but I mean, like, you know, these people are okay. desperate. So <laughs> we'll give Fair. them. Fair. <laughs> I do, um, yeah. I do really appreciate though when she's like, all of these people say God are dead. And he's like, well, this demon lives in a sewer. Obviously the gods abandoned yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> Julia takes the God. What's it called again? Our Lady of Our Lady Underground. Our Lady Underground. Lady Underground, aka Garcelle from Real Housewives. Um, she like prays to it. They want to. I I do like that they don't say pray. They say petition. I kind of like the use of mm-hmm. that word, making it like not religious. Even though we're talking about a god, I appreciate that. Um, Julia wakes up in her empty dark apartment some religious iconography happens and she's visited by one of the real housewives um and yeah she she calls julia daughter and i like felt i was like oh like it like hurt my feelings (laughs) but also like made me i don't know made me feel feelings um that we will get to but yeah what do we think of this we finally get the the lady they've been looking for. 
I have I have thoughts, but all my thoughts are spoilers. So I, can't. I was going to say there's, yeah. there's a lot of spoilers. Around it, I do. Yes, I, I did have to spoil it for my brain to be like, oh, okay, this, uh, okay, like. I do like how she's like, you know, everything has led you here because so far everything for Julia has been a dead end. Yes. So like, yeah. it is nice that she's like, you know, you had to go through all this so that you could, like, there's a chance that you will be able to meet a god and and get what you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's nice, at I least. It was interesting that, like, why milk? Like, why milk? Is it Pouring like mother, mother's I, milk? That's, I'm sure that's, there's some religious reason. That confused reason. me. You know? I don't know. Meredith, any... Like, is it, is <laughs> no, I was like, I, I, and it's funny, like, I would love to know, because I'm not a housewives person, like, was this very much like, oh my gosh, it's her, like, how, how does this casting play for people who know more about that than me i mean i will say i don't know much i yeah you don't I either, know right? she's a real housewife though but i didn't know until i did this rewatch like that okay. was when i was like why does that lady look so familiar and then i imdb her i was like oh because i see gifs of her on twitter all the time because she's okay. one of the housewives <laughs> um huh. and also she was in um there was a series she was in on hulu that i can't remember the name of that was about okay. like hair and there was like hair products that she was putting in black women's hair to like control them and kind of making them step word wives e okay oh, that's not helpful it was it was a fun series it was a silly <laughs> twist but yeah i don't i i just am very curious i wonder if they were like any of the like the actress who plays julia she was like watching real housewives one day and like oh shit <laughs> like i worked <laughs> with her because i think this predated Oh, okay. I was going to ask, was she yeah. acting before she? She was, yeah, she was acting. The... Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think that's not. Uh, I mean, it's not uncommon, right? The I always forget. Is it Kyle Richards that is in Halloween as a child mm-hmm. and was in the new one? Yeah, so I guess it's like not crazy uncommon. Anyway, so she tells her say, the uh, when she gets the dot on the map and then she wakes up and it's a dream i would be terrified because like i don't know where that dot was there's no way i'd be able to remember where to go <laughs> i would have forgotten immediately <laughs> today i was with a student doing reviews and i had to ask her her last name and i was like i maria can you tell me because i had to write it down in front of her and i was just like gonna pretend and then i was like i can't pretend i don't know what her last name is <laughs> and i was like it's better than not knowing her first name so true true yeah <laughs> um yeah so then we go back to physical kids cottage can one of you explain to me how the spell works i didn't understand how sometimes they they were like you can't take more than one dose but then they were taking your dose to get back their emotions but then alice and penny Sorry. weren't i like didn't quite they do the spell to put their emotions into the bottle and okay. then they have three hours to go emotionless and then they have to drink it to get their emotions back. But he also says yeah. something about you can't take more than one dose. I, uh, I don't remember that. Don't be more than three hours. And I think it's don't rely on it too much. Like you shouldn't be doing it too often, I think was the. Or maybe that's. I don't know. They all take it. They all gasp. We, I love a love of them all gasping. Quentin, I love Penny complimenting Quentin's sweater. Yes, Quentin <laughs> says that it's like a Vulcan ritual from Star Trek. Penny tells Quentin he likes his sweater, and I am like charmed by them all talking robotically. Mm-hmm. I love. I yes. I had I had therapy today, and all I was thinking is like, what a great. Like they could have done a whole episode of what are these people like and and this idea that they can fine tune these powers when all these other things aren't in the way, when their anxieties, when they're I loved I love this and I wish we had more of it, but this is the show, right? Where it'll give you right. I can reference fifty episodes of other shows that they might be referencing in this episode and they're gonna have so many more ideas it won't matter, but this yeah. could have been the whole thing. No, I agree. What I really really enjoy about that magic um is the idea that like they all get inundated with their emotions again but they're all very specific emotions you know like some of them are sad like uh uh i quentin is like anxious right and it just it makes me wonder if like i wonder if like maybe these are the emotions that is blocking their magic that like Mm. they suffer from the most and like this is like the, the 
comeback. It's like, cause they don't feel every emotion all at once. They're not like crying, yeah. laughing, screaming, you know? I, so I, I really thought that was really powerful in a way to like, like which emotion are these characters each going to feel? And what does it say about them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think you're. I I think you're right. That sounds like yeah, I love that um, read. Yeah, and it's probably why I we all know we're Quintins because like this this like <laughs> I don't know of all of them. I like how he c- comes out of this is relatable. And doesn't that sound nice to be able to be like, yeah, I can put my anxiety in this fucking bottle and then I can push <laughs> it on. That sounds so nice. That's what I was thinking about to watch this and then have therapy. I was like, I wish I could just like honestly compartmentalize to the point where it didn't exist and I would get so much done and then I could just, it's very like severance style. What if I could have part of the day that was emotions and yes. part of the day that was like power and productivity. I don't know that it would be good for me, but you know. <laughs> I feel like I would just I don't know. I feel like I would be able to get all my writing done. I feel like I would do everything I need to do for the podcast if I didn't have my that brain part. scrambling around. Ugh. So Penny does say feelings are bullshit, which I like. <laughs> um, so, okay. So they like, I guess it's just supposed to be that they're like training a lot, right? Like they they have to do a lot of training because this is like. Intense. Yeah, I think. During the probability thing, it was the beast is coming next week. In every scenario, the beast is coming next. So I think it's right. like we got crunch time for these few right. days. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, they go back after practicing. They t- get their feelings back. Margot crying asks Elliot why they aren't friends. Alice cries, telling Q she loves him. Alice wakes up the next day hungover. Quinn <laughs> says, I hate everything. I hate air right now, which also is me when I'm hungover. Um <laughs> and uh she says okay i wanted to know what everyone so he like oh they should try it without their emotions taken away and q gets shitty and says not everyone is like her and she gets offended this reminds me of like when you know a hot person and you like say like well they do that this you know you're getting this because you're hot and they get immediately mad like what do you mean and it's like well no but like that is a thing he's telling her that she is better at magic than everyone else what is there to be offended at yeah. which she admitted a few episodes ago was like she that is. was her thing holding her back was that she knows she's better than everyone so like, is there is do you have a take on is, this well is he also implying that she's like less dealing with less of the emotions like less empathy less like i didn't know if that was the the sort mm-hmm. of second layer of this of like you are more closed off therefore mm-hmm. i don't know the reaction made me think Might that be. but i don't know all right, that's fair. I mean, if someone if someone uh, wrote this story into you for love letters, what would you what would you tell them? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I half the with her. I mean, despite my taking a turn this episode up until that last scene, also like, um, but with this, I was, uh, yeah. She kind of wants to have it all ways of like, I'm the best. I'm one of the gang. I'm, um, and I did read it a little bit. Like it was, it came off a little bit of a, you are not like us, um, and you are but part of it being connected to the, what they had just bottled. So I don't know, like that was, that was my read a little bit, but I, partly because of her reaction. So maybe that's I'm fair. just rejecting that. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, <laughs> I guess if someone wrote into you about this, the first thing you would say oh. is, holy shit, magic's real. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I forgot that emotions? part of the question. <laughs> I, I would, I mean, I both so so much of the time I would say to Alan, like, just take it easy. Like, this is like, <laughs> this is like, I would be like, you're on a really plot heavy show that also has emotions. You need to ride it out till the next scene. That's what I would tell them. <laughs> like, give it, give, it five, give it five minutes and you will have an entirely new set of circumstances. Don't you worry. Yeah, that's what I would say. That's good. <laughs> that's good. I like that. <laughs> they meet up all outside, blah, blah, blah. Penny says every warrior learned to do this, and he bets plenty of them were hot yeah. messes, which I like. Yeah, Penny and Alice have their little moment of while everyone's still in the right. cottage of going out, and he's like, "Sit down, meditate. Like, we're gonna figure this out without the bottles." And so Why I'm a hard them together? <laughs> sell on. Yeah, I'm a hard sell on origin stories and training montages. I will say I was into this training montage because it's not too long. It's just like I like that we get plot between the training montages. Um, and like I like that, yeah. I just I like that, and I like seeing all of them together because we have not gotten that right. It's like mm-hmm. we've gotten the like the couples paired off. We've gotten like Elliot and Alice and Quentin together. We've gotten Penny with that gang, and like 
this is kind of the first time they're all working together, which I like. Um, mm-hmm. Unless I'm mistaken. No, right? I think it is. Yeah. Where, like, they're not... I don't know. No one... Like, Penny's not, like, saying shitty things. He's not like, oh, I'm not gonna do this. He actually listened to that professor. Um, and we do see... This is, like... It is sudden, but it works for me. The the Alice and Penny suddenly, like, bonding. Because all they do is high-five, and Quentin's like... Like, he, like, mean mugs them. high five him, him just because the thing wobbles. I love it so much. It's cute. It's nice seeing, like... For me, I very much am like, I like seeing these two be friends because we don't really see these guys get to, aside from Margot and Elliot, we don't really see these people get to be like friends, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? They're kind of just like trying to not die from the beast killing them together. And then Elliot and Margot are actually friends. Margot says to being bosses, which is something she says later, um, chugs their emotions. Her and Q fall over. Um, he like fully collapses. Um, well, they were overtime on this one too. Okay, was that what it was? Yeah, I was gonna right, ask so because Alice and Penny are just kind of like, hmm. yeah. Well, they didn't take theirs. Oh, right? they didn't so take they... theirs. Oh, yeah. no, Alice. What... That's why they were still just like trying to get the bottle to fly off the shelf. Right. Yeah, that's why they high five because it wobbled because they were doing they were doing it without bottle. They're doing it without. Obviously. That makes sense because that's what fully threw me off from how this spell works. I was like, but they don't need to take theirs. Why don't they? I don't see it around their necks, but it's because they had them on the inside. So they decided that it's better to try it without. All right. So we cut back to the cottage. We get a very nice Quentin and Elliot scene. <clears throat> Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I do uh, like this, right? Yes, it's great. I love any time they're together. Um, <laughs> but I do enjoy their little fireside chat it's it's nice right it's i kind of like didn't remember that we do get these small scenes of like their friendship and relationship like progressing Developing, um, yeah. yeah and someone in a previous episode i forget what episode it was like there's an episode where quentin says something shitty to someone and might have been ryan she might have said this that like margo and elliot do genuinely like quentin like right like Mm -hmm. quentin doesn't fit in with them but they do seem to genuinely like him which we see two minutes after this scene well i was gonna say even like right after their fireside talk when elliot is passed out margo and quentin have a really like nice moment together talking about elliot's problems and like Mm -hmm. how they're gonna get through this i will say that like made me kind of emotional i love i just (laughs) i'm all about the friendship love and like I'm realizing that I'm Margot in a lot of not as cool as Margot or as witty or confident or hot as Margot, but I am Margot with the like, but this is my friend and I love them so much. Um, Mm -hmm. And something you said earlier, Meredith, we have to have a talk after this, but like, I feel like I get that a lot with my friends where like, I love them. I love them so much to me. They are like, you know, they are like my partner, my ride or die, but it's like the way Margot is where it's like, well, but duh, my best friend's my partner in crime. Like duh, my best friend's a person I do everything with. <laughs> like, I know not a lot of other people see it that way. Not even a lot of my closest friends, but like, that's how I am with friendships. Um, and I just like seeing that. And she will continue being how I am with friendships moving forward. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I just, I don't know. I really liked seeing her talk to Quentin because we're starting like, Margot continues to get depth, but we're starting to see a lot of that like in this back of the season, right? Like in the back end. And I like that. Mm-hmm. Quentin has a knack for having conversations with almost all of his friends at some point that are just really like heart to heart and very heartfelt. Like you can see the care that he has for all of these people around him. Yeah. It's really nice to see every character almost get a moment with Quentin to just like feel it out you know yeah no i'd agree with that um and yeah i just i i also feel bad for her because she's is upset right like she doesn't know how to like quote unquote fix it um and she cries on his shoulder and i'm like oh my sweet Mm. angel um Mm. and then they bang and then they bang bang. (laughs) you know (laughs) And if there's another thing I can relate to Margo, it's about, it's like, yeah, we had sex. No big deal. Don't be weird about it. Like, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, the flashes were very sexy that we got. Um, Mm -hmm. 
I so this is a moment. The doorknob looking seat. The things that I remember <laughs> <laughs> from here back. Um, the first time I watched this were the doorknob licking and this sexy threesome flashes. Like those are like mm-hmm. that. And then the beast like ripping out the Dean's eyes in the first episode. Those were like yeah. the three main things aside from a fourth thing that happens in the finale that I remembered explicitly from this season. I'm um, sending it's a funny. theme for what catches your attention now. <laughs> I wonder what it could be. <laughs> oh, and Katie's mom exploding into blood. So it's like horror movie shit. And then sexy gay shit is like what... <laughs> catches my attention makes sense makes yeah doesn't doesn't not make sense for me um but as we're panning down and getting the sexy flashes of their threesome colin who's at the end of the bed well it's alice isn't it because of course why not <laughs> and i remember when re-watching the scene as it was like getting the flashes all i could think was in the book doesn't alice walk in on them and then it's, and then it's like, oh right <laughs> i love that um yeah so we end with she's like looking pissed off a downer i thought so they have like a fight earlier in the season where they're kind of broken up in my brain this threesome happened during that time not like while they were still together Mm. um they spend a lot of their relationship fighting though yeah they Mm. it's Almost like Buffy and Angel kind of in season yeah. like yeah. one and two where it's like, oh, I love you, but no. And it's like, well, just fucking do it or don't. I don't know. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> um, yeah. And I think that's why I wasn't so sold on Alice and Quentin many of the other times I've like watched this season. But this time <laughs> I can appreciate it for what it is. And like yeah. Meredith, I think you said this too. Like, this has been a more enjoyable season one watch for me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Than it usually is. Um, and I mean, maybe it's just, it's like, oh, I get to talk with my friends about it, which does make it more fun. But Mm -hmm. I feel like because we know, because so, like we said earlier, so much of like the groundwork is laid in this season. Like we're not just doing shit that we don't come back to. We do. It's like laying the groundwork for these characters moving forward. So that's why I think we can appreciate it. But, uh, all right. We're at the end. Oh, favorite outfit, Colin. It is... In the scene when they go to visit Katie at Julia's apartment, the yellow jacket ensemble that Margot wears. All right, yeah. I do like, I did like that jacket, or it was like fashionable jubilee. Um, mm. Meredith? Yellow jacket? That's what I have written down. I, have read, I wrote down jacket. <laughs> the only bit of color in Julia's apartment. Well, and, and maybe it popped for that reason, but I actually, you know, sometimes they have those websites like as worn on TV and you can see where you mm. can buy it. And I'm like this, show is a few years old now and i don't know but i was starting to like google (laughs) you said that about alice's outfit in the first yes i am i am like shopping during this season's misery watch i am fully being a consumer (laughs) Tarek, i keep forgetting to to, to look at the outfits every single time i like you know motherfucker i last episode you were like i didn't know we were doing this and i was like i I know this says it in the email (laughs) <laughs> I, you know, it's my fault. And I would say the yellow jacket is because I, I did actually really much like that jacket. But there are two <laughs> yellow jackets. So I have to say Penny's gown. I, I'm like, <laughs> sure. Good call. I don't know. I don't know. Just to be different. You know, <laughs> yeah, <he wears laughs> well, well. To, make up, to make up for it, Tarek, I have two. Um, and none of them are the yellow jacket. Uh, Margo's hot pink magenta, like not trench coat, pea coat coat i don't know Meredith. what would you call that because it's not either of those but it kind of is i need to i need to look that up again because i don't remember how it fastened um i remember the color <laughs> like this but I don't... this is how it fastens <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like a yeah it's like a pico trench coat. it's like a little yes but it's lighter it's a lighter right yeah like yeah it's because it doesn't look thick like a pea coat normally is yeah yes exactly <laughs> Apple. For everyone that is not watching this on YouTube, I just showed the 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 Margot figure I made for our images is in that magenta coat, and I, that's how I knew it was magenta, not hot pink, because I had to paint it magenta. Um, <laughs> I promise, next time I watch an episode, I will look at the outfits more. I <laughs> promise. Uh, that and Alice, I did like Alice's Edward Cullen pea coat that she wears. That kind of like cons- it consumes her whole outfit. You, can't I did see, notice that one as well. But I yeah. did think it looked cute on her. Um, I mean, I I'm do. a coat person, so I'm always going to notice. This show That's has why, a lot of coats, right? Listen, I, it does, and this is why. Like, 
I find coats to be very soothing and I don't have like a bag thing or a shoe thing, but like, it's why I watch Atomic Blonde over and over because I'll just be like, sort of rock myself to sleep while being like, here's a coat, here's a coat, like just gorgeous coat. But, but I had forgotten that this was a great coat show. From making the figures, it's like everyone wears a flowy jacket and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Yeah. Those are my two favorite, uh, favorite scene, Meredith. Uh, I would say the, the Penny Alice scene, I, I think, um, I mean, tied with, it, it, it's not quite a scene, but that tied with Alice walking away from the payphone because I don't know why it was so meaningful to me that I was like, here we go. Be it, be a person. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but in both situations, I was like, okay, now, now I can, in, I can sink into this character All right. after a slow start. That's fair. Uh, Colin? Uh, I think the training montage was specifically the Penny Alice high five. Um, Tarek. The threesome, for sure. <laughs> the three, like, like, I, because yeah, like, one, one of my uh, favorite things about that is the fluidity in which they give Quentin with that and like the yeah. ability and that they don't make it like a big deal. Yes. Like, yes. like I really, truly love they just kind of let him make this like mistake, but they don't paint it any sort of way. Like he's right. not that you don't have to force him to identify as gay or bi or anything. Right. Like it's just a threesome. It just happened. You know? Yeah. And and I, would you also say that this is like it's it's from this moment on that that continues on with the show? That like I remember seeing this the first time, being like, oh okay, like this is. It gets like we're, queerer. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna it, allow yeah. for this and not have to call it out in weird ways and just yeah. yeah. No, I almost feel like that was them testing the waters, wonderful. right? Like, to be like, what can we get away with? Because I'm sure yeah. starting the show, it was like, yes, you can have your gay character, but I don't yeah, want to see it in like, my face, you know? <laughs> especially when, like, this show aired. it yeah. Like, like TV was just not as queer as it is today. And so, like, yeah. any like any sort of gay thing that happens is explicitly, like, this is the queer thing. This is the gay thing. So, right. like, this is the gay storyline. Really, really yeah. It. Yeah, and they were I, like, "Psych, everybody's gay." <laughs> like they yeah. really just started like, "Okay, yeah, no, it really, it, it." I love the way they, and I love the way, you know, just I think Alice's, the the camera just like how how it finds her and, um, she doesn't it's like overdo a horror movie it. Reveal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it is a horror movie reveal, and and he's out of focus, but she and she the face is sort of you don't even know where she's going to go with it. It's a nice, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, Tarek, I had the same thing, but I said from Margot confessing to Quentin in bed to the sexy threesome, um, because, duh. Uh, what grade do we give this episode, Tarek? Oh, I would give this a uh, solid, like, B. Like, okay. pretty, pretty good. B, That's B, ma wavering on B minus. Okay. Colin? Uh, I go probably a b plus i think it there's a lot of great character moments there's a lot of setting up for the final two episodes of the season which is nice so meredith a minus and it really is because of the threesome because it does <laughs> it does I mean, I mean because of that but also because it shifts us again into um it it opens so many doors of of the show of like mm -hmm. how they're going to change up relationships and who we might see coupled and it just felt very freeing on many levels. <laughs> Meredith, you don't got to convince the two F words in this uh, <laughs> recording with you. Like, <laughs> um, I give it a B. I was going to do B minus. You all convinced me it is more of a B. There's just a little too much plot, but it is enjoyable, right? Like yeah. it is still enjoyable to watch. And I do think Colin, you're right. It's setting us up, like moving all the pieces in place for the last two episodes. Um, yeah. And I appreciate that. Um, thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for listening. We are so close to being done. And I want you all to know if you're listening to this and you've been listening, uh, this is being recorded on the day the episode zero with Lev Grossman came out. That is how fucking ahead of it I am for the first time in my life. I'm ahead of something. <laughs> so this episode, I think, won't air till the end of May. And it is Tuesday, March 5th. Holy oh, shit. Wow. Look at me. Um, so yeah, thanks for uh, almost finishing it out with us. And uh, if you like Slayer Fest 98, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Uh, give us a subscribe and a good rating, please, and thank you. 
you want to find us on social media, we are at SlayerFestX98 on all social media platforms. And if you want to support us, you can find us on Patreon, where we are covering Buffy Season 3 for the 25th anniversary. Actually, we'll probably be done covering it by the time this <laughs> airs, but it will all be there. Um, and we've covered Firefly, Harley Quinn, we have Patreon Zooms, we have Watch Alongs, and we have a Discord channel, which is pretty fun and chill. And Meredith? I think it would make a great gift if you subscribe somebody else to the Patreon who likes Ooh. those shows. And... I got to talk about Batman the Animated Series on it. And that is worth the Patreon price because... We are going through Batman the Animated Series as well. It kind of got pushed to the side because there were so many Buffy Season 3, but we are getting back to it. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and I do... You know, I got to talk to you about that later because I I might skip some of the boring episodes. Listen, not everyone is a winner for adults, but the ones that are really <laughs> are, are. Yes. Um, <laughs> and if you want to follow me, I am at Ian X Carlos. Colin, where can everyone find you? I'm on the various social medias at csmith03. And Tarek, where can everyone find you? Uh, Tarek, T-A-R-I-Q underscore R-A-O-U-F, my middle name, Rauf. So on Twitter and Instagram. And Meredith, where can everyone find you? I would go to the Love Letters Relationship Podcast and you'll hear lots of stories. And I'm at Meredith Goldstein on other things. You know, I'm like, oh, because we did that one episode where I had you do, like, the advice you give Buffy. Maybe I'll do that for, like, magician's characters. Oh, my gosh. I felt like we got pretty deep with Buffy. I feel like I was, like, I just was, like, everybody should do everything that Oz says up until he goes abroad. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, everyone. Well, uh, we are almost done with our magician's coverage, and we will be moving on to Angel Season 3. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.